life, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life, oh God. In you we live, we move, and we have our being. In you we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank you for the gift of life, oh God. Oh, my Libras, Lord, we give you praise. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Lord, your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of them. We are more than three here. So we believe by faith that you are here in the midst of us. But we want to intentionally welcome you. So we say welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Father, Lord. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we welcome you, O God. Lord, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. You're the power of the church. We welcome your presence. Father, we welcome you, O God. Lord Jesus, we welcome you. You're the bridegroom of the church. Lord, we welcome you, O God. Lord, we welcome you, O God. We welcome you in this place. Oh, take over in the name of Jesus, Lord. Take over in the name of Jesus, O God. Lord, we give you all the praise, O God. Oh, Lord, we worship and adore you. Lord, we exalt your majesty, O God. There's no one like unto you, O God. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. Lord, we give you all the adoration, O God. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We don't take you for granted, O God. We slept and we woke up. We don't take you for granted, O God. We're not hopeless. We don't take you for granted, O God. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. Thank you for the gift of life, O God. Thank you for the gift of life, O God. Lord, we worship and adore you. Lord, we exalt your majesty. Thank you for Ignite Church, my God. Thank you for Ignite Church. Your word says your house shall be called a house of prayer. Thank you for a house of prayer, O God. Oh, Lord, thank you for a house of prayer, for making this church a house of prayer. Lord, we don't take you for granted, oh God. Lord, we say thank you for a house of prayer, oh God. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory, oh God. Thank you for America, my God. Thank you for America, the land of the free, my God. Thank you for America, oh God. America, the beautiful, oh God. Thank you for America, oh God. Thank you for America, my God. Thank you for this nation, oh God. This nation that you have called by your name. This nation that you have chosen for yourself, even to proclaim your glory, oh God. This nation. Oh God, that you have chosen uh, to impact the rest of the world. Lord, we thank you for America, oh God. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, we worship and adore you, oh God. Lord, we exalt your majesty, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, we worship you. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to today's prayer meeting. Our God is a good God. Ignite Church is a praying church. Hallelujah. Ignite Church is a praying church and we're so grateful to God that we are praying pastors. I tell you something, prayer is, a, is, the, is the master thing, is the key thing. And when you find a praying church, and you can be rest assured that the presence of the living God is there. Jesus Christ said, my house shall be called a house of what? A house of prayer. A house of prayer. That was the thing that the Lord was impressing upon my heart this morning. It's a toy. Ignite Church is a house of prayer. He said, do you remember what I said in my word? That my house shall be called a house of prayer. Ignite Church is a house of prayer. And we want to give God all the praise and all the glory for that. And we're going to be praying for America this morning. America is a great nation. Do you know that? America is a great nation. And the Lord chooses people. The Lord chooses nations. I was studying the word of God yesterday. And I was seeing where the Lord was talking to the children of Israel. And he, and he through Moses that I chose you. He chose Israel. The Lord chooses people. He chooses nations. And I believe that America is not a mistake. America has been chosen by God. And if you were the, if you were the devil, what would you do? If you knew that somebody had a heavy calling upon their life, what would you do if you were the devil? You would attack that person from every side. But guess what? God has a remnant. Say a remnant. A remnant that will, that will not take no for an answer. A remnant that will not allow the devil to win. Hello? 
a remnant that will not allow that. And I believe that the Lord is raising up people all over this nation. He's raising up churches all over this nation. And we're part of that group, that army that the Lord is raising to make sure that the will of God is established in America. To make sure that the kingdom of Christ is established in this nation. And we're going to be praying for America. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 12, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Where does blessing come from? When you speak blessing, blessing comes. But it's also saying that it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. That means that the mouth is very powerful. And what the Lord was sharing with me as I shared this, as I was looking into this scripture was that even the wicked in that place can be a Christian. If that Christian is speaking what does not line up with the word of God concerning that situation. He says, the city is exalted. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Today we want to speak blessings over America. We want to prophesy over America. We want to prophesy that America, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, shall fulfill her purpose in this end time. Revival broke out in Asbury. It's not, it's not, it's not a coincidence, it's not an accident. Revival broke out in Azusa many, many years ago. There is a looming, there is, there is a, a prophecy right now that we are waiting. We are waiting and I believe that that prophecy is already manifesting itself. That there will be salvation of a billion souls. Hallelujah. And I've been praying into that in my private corner. I want us to pray because America is in a strategic position even for that revival to break out, to break out all over the world. But that America will be a partaker. And now this is how we're going to pray. We're going to speak blessings over America, over every industry in America. The media industry, the entertainment industry, the music industry, our government houses, where the seats of government of America, that everyone will line up according to the word of the Lord, that America in the name of Jesus Christ shall exalt the name of Jesus Christ. America shall exalt the name of Jesus Christ. America shall fulfill her purpose in God in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we prophesy your blessing over America. Right now in the name of Jesus, America, we decree and declare that you are the blessed of the Lord. You are the blessed of the Lord. Oh, Rabbi Secretary, we pray that every arm of government will line up according to the word of God, according to the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that the kingdom of God is established over America. The kingdom of God is established over this nation, over the music industry, over the media industry, over the entertainment industry industry in the name of Jesus over our educational sector over our health sector in the name of Jesus Christ that the knowledge of the glory of Jesus Christ radiates all over America in the name of Jesus we prophesy light over America in the name of Jesus Christ that light overtakes and overturns even the darkness of the enemy in the name of Jesus oh Rabbi Libras Amen. You know, the Bible says that arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah 60 verse 1. But when you continue to read, it says, Behold, gross darkness shall cover the earth, but the Lord will arise upon his people. We want to pray that the Lord will arise upon America in the name of Jesus Christ. The light of God will overturn and overtake the darkness of the enemy. Anything you can think of that is contrary to the word and the will of God is darkness. And we want to we want, we want establish that. Beloved, I want to let you know that God is counting on you and I to execute the judgments written. It's not the angels that will come down and do it. It's us, the believers. There are judgments that are written in the word of God. And God is waiting upon you and I to execute those judgments written. If we don't, nothing will be done. In the book of Acts, Herod took 
P, uh, James and killed him. God was very much alive. The church was very much alive. But the church was waiting on God. Herod is a type of Satan. He took James and killed him. And when Herod saw that he pleased the majority of the people, what did he do? He took Peter and was going to kill Peter. He was trying to cut off the heads of the church. Trying to take out the leadership of the church. He was trying to take out the leadership of the church. He took James the apostle, killed him. Then took Peter and said, that Peter, that one with the big mouth, let's kill him too. Went for Peter. And at this time, the church rose up. If the church had slept, Peter would have been killed. Just like James. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you allow the enemy, the enemy will take over. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I know what I'm talking about. It's in the word of God. He has shown us more than enough examples. The church rose up and began to pray. And the church prayed until something happened. The church prayed. And when the church prayed, heaven rose up and said, they're calling on me. And heaven sent angel. And the angel went to rescue Peter. Ah, excuse me. Where was the angel when James was being killed? Where was God when James was being killed? This earth, God has given it to you and I. We are the ones who take dominion. Say dominion. We are the ones who take dominion on this earth. That's why he says in his word. And if we don't take the dominion, the, the enemy will run rampage. That's the reason why you are going to pray. Somebody sent me something yesterday. I could never watch it. What is happening in the elementary school? The books that are in public libraries for children of ages 3, 5, 7, 8. Now, I could not even look at them. I'm going to be 53 this year. I could not even look at them. And the enemy is creeping in. He's the master of darkness. We belong to the light. We are the light of the world. Our prayer point is very simple. Let the light of God overturn and overtake every darkness that is trying to engulf America. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we stand our ground against the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh, la prase that the light of Jesus Christ will overturn, overtake every darkness that is trying to engulf America. We push back the hand of the enemy over this nation. We resist the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. We resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. We push back the hand of darkness over America. We push back the hand of darkness over this nation. Let the light of Jesus Christ overturn, overturn, overturn every darkness. In our educational sector, in the name of Jesus, let the light of Jesus Christ overturn laws and decrees that are against God in the name of Jesus Christ. Ripapa Libraskete Yakrada, Elebra Baba Baba Seketeya, Iraka Likrada Basaka, Elebra Seketeria, Elebra Seketa Yakrada Basakata, Lepro Sotoria. We plead the blood of Jesus over America. We plead the blood of Jesus over America. Satan, you shall not take over. In the name of Jesus, every satanic agenda is destroyed. In this nation, the Bible says, whatsoever you allow shall be allowed. Whatsoever you disallow shall be disallowed. That's what the Bible says. And we're going to pray. We disallow every satanic agenda over this nation. In whatever form that agenda may be showing his face, we disallow it in the name of Jesus. Pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we disallow, we forbid, we bind every satanic agenda, every satanic agenda over this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, every satanic agenda, we disallow it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every satanic agenda of America, Libra Seketa Yakranaba, Elebra Shokotori. Oh 
Amen. I don't know why God is having me to go in this direction. The other day, Pastor Laurie was telling me one or two things. I mean, it's bad enough for people to say kill babies. But it's another thing when you're so bold about it that you're going to be making those babies, using them for rituals. Using them for rituals. And if they're so bold about theirs, then we have to be bold about our own faith. Satanic abortion ritual clinics. And blood cries. Blood cries. Blood, it cries. Listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 18, 18. I quote, I paraphrased it, but I want to read it to you in Amplified Version. Listen. It says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth shall, already, shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. We're going to declare unlawful every satanic agenda taking over different aspects of this nation. We're going to declare unlawful, improper, and we're going to bind the spirits behind them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we bind, oh God, the spirits behind every satanic agenda in this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bind, we declare unlawful, we declare improper, and we forbid every satanic agenda trying to take over this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, let Brasketa Yekradaba, let Kredaba Sheketeria, and let Brababa Likredaba Sakata. Regali Brosso Cotoyam, Ragele Brasche Ketayam, Ile Brasse Ketaya, Seta, you shall not have your way in America in the name of Jesus. Le Gradaba Siketaya, Elebra, we bind every satanic agenda, we destroy, we demolish them in the name of Jesus. Le Gradaba Sheketaya, Ile Brasse Ketaya, Lord, we worship you. Amen. We're going to be praying for our pastors. Amen. I've always encouraged us to pray for our pastors. It's important, beloved. Not only when we come to church, but even in our private times. The only reason why we're in this building right now, right here, is because a couple said yes. If they did not say yes, we would not be here. That's the truth. You might be somewhere else, but not here. And when people are at the forefront, they can be they are open to the attacks of the enemy in different ways. I pray for my pastors before I pray for myself, and I'm not trying to brag or impress you, but I'm going to, I'm trying to impress upon you because I know that our pastors watch over our souls in prayer. So if somebody watches over your soul in prayer, if you were the devil, what would you do? You would try to take the person out. You would try to discourage them. You would try to depress them. You would try to throw all kinds of things at them so that they don't have time to pray for you. So when you pray for your pastors, you are actually praying for yourselves. Really. And I happen to know that these are people of prayer. But the Lord spends hours hours in prayer what are you praying about praying about people praying about everyone sending prayer texts I want to pray for those, that kind of people I want to cover them in prayer I don't want anything to happen to them I want them to be strong I want them to be, to be peaceful I want their lives to flourish I want their, their, their own desires to be granted as well so I want to implore you to please pray for your pastors in your private times when we come to church. The Bible says in 2 Peter 1, 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We're going to pray for them, all manner of prayers. And we're going to pray that grace 
grace, grace be multiplied. Peace, peace like a river be multiplied to them. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray for our pastors. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray for our pastors right now. Lord, we pray for Pastor Laurie and Pastor Troy. Lord, we cover them in the blood of Jesus. And we ask in the name of Jesus that peace and grace be multiplied to them in the name of Jesus. My God, we ask, oh God, that you will cover them even in the day of battle. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will surround them with songs of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we long life you satisfy them and show them your salvation. Lord, we ask, oh God, that Lord, you will pull them. You will strengthen them. They will not be weary, oh God. They will not be faint. In the name of Jesus Christ, it shall be well with their going out and their coming in all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. We pray that you will strengthen the work in their hands. You will pray that, Lord, Lord, you will strengthen the work in their hands. The work will multiply. It will be fruitful. It will grow. It will increase. It will expand. It will enlarge on every side in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, oh God, that Lord, you continue to use them, oh God, to bring many sons and daughters, oh God, even into destiny. In the mighty name name of Jesus Christ. We pray that their health shall not fail. In Jesus that their health shall not fail. We cover their marriage in the blood of Jesus. All their children, their grandchildren, generations after them, we cover in the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Everything that is up against them in judgment, Lord, we condemn. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that your angelic protection be their portion all the days of their lives in the name of Jesus. No harassment of the enemy even shall prevail against them in the mighty name of Jesus. No assault of the enemy shall prevail against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you all the praise for our pastors, oh God. Lord, we worship and adore you. Lord, we exalt your majesty. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be calling on um, little Troy in a minute, in a, few, in a couple of minutes. But before I do, I want us to pray for these states that we're in. Just like we pray for America, California is where we are. Amen? Amen? Resist the enemy in the spirit. Don't let him take over the state. California is a historical state. It's a historical state spiritually. Do you know the revival in Azusa Street that broke out in California? Do you know that that revival gave birth to modern Pentecostalism? When we lived in Virginia, we attended a church. And that church was really strong. I don't know. I think the person that started the denomination or the church was part of the Azusa, I mean, flowed from that Azusa Street revival. A lot of things happened as a result of Azusa Street Revival. It happened here in California. The spirit of that revival is still in this state. And that's the reason why the enemy is fighting this state so badly. But you and I can push back the hand of the enemy and take California for Jesus. We can take California for Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I want us to say this. Please, can you declare this after me? California, you shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. We claim every city, every county, every seat of government of California for Jesus we're going to say it again. California, hear the voice of the word of the Lord. You shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. We claim every county, every city, every seat of government of California for Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that revival shall yet break out in California. Let the fire of revival burn in California. Begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we claim California for Jesus. We claim California for Jesus. We push back the hand of the enemy over California. We claim every city, every county, 
today. Every seat of government in California for Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lepra Secretary Shata. Every street, every neighborhood in California shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In the name of Jesus, revival shall yet break out in California. Revival shall yet break out in California. In the name of Jesus, revival shall yet break out in California. In the name of Jesus, let the fire revival burn. Let the fire revival burn in California, in every church, in the name of Jesus, in every city, in the name of Jesus, in every county, in the name of Jesus. We go souls into the kingdom. We go souls into the kingdom. We go souls into the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Libra we're going to pray for our church, Ignite Church. Because when that revival breaks out, there will be souls that will be saved. Harvest of souls. And we want to pull in the harvests. Every church, including Ignite Church, shall be filled with souls. Say amen. The church of Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ in California, in America, all over the world shall be filled with souls of men and women. And we claim them. We call them forth from the north, the south, the east and the west. We come for souls, souls to be discipled. We call them for, begin to pray for our church. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, Lord, we call for souls, oh God, souls, oh God, of men and women, boys and girls, families, oh God, to ignite church. In the name of Jesus, as such as you have ordained, oh Lord, to be in this church, Lord, we call them forth from the north, the south, the east and the west. We call for souls, we call for families, we call for families, we call for families to ignite church in the name of Jesus Christ. Libra secete ya kera raba ile braba ba secete ya era gele braba ba ba secete ya ela braba ba 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 secete ya ile braba ba 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 secete ya. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Souls, we go for souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Libra raba secete ya. Give us men and women, oh God, of different nationalities. We call them for the Ignite Church in the name of Jesus Christ. Elebra seketa ye kradarara. Elebra ba seketa ya. Everyone that you have called unto us, Lord, we receive them. Everyone that you have called unto us, we receive them. Everyone that you have called unto us, we receive them. In the name of Jesus, le kradaba shakata ya. Amen. Ignite Church is not only a praying church. Ignite Church is a discipling church. People are discipled for Jesus Christ to live in authenticity with God. So it is important to us in Ignite Church to continue to grow spiritually. As the word of the Lord is preached, undiluted word of the Lord is preached from this pulpit. And also in our private lives. So I'm going to call on little Troy to come and take a prayer point concerning our spiritual growth in this church. Uh, Ephesians verse 3, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 through 19, NLT, it says, I pray from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit then Christ will make his home in your hearts. As you trust in him, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all fullness of life and power that comes with God. Uh, the word I'm getting in my spirit is just intentionality, just being intentional about building a relationship with God. Uh, so let's just begin to pray right now. Father, I pray that we would invite you into our hearts, Father. 
I pray that we would set aside time for you to grow a relationship with you. In the name of Jesus right now, I pray that we would be very intentional, Father. I pray that we would make it clear what our goals are, Father. I pray that we would focus in on you, Father. We invite you in our lives right now. Yes, Father, we're intentional, Father. We make the hard decisions, Father. We put you first before everything, Father. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, that we will grow in you, oh God, with intentionality in the name of Jesus Christ. That our roots, oh God, we go deep down in the name of Jesus Christ. Immovable, unshakable in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want everyone to pray. Hebrews 4 16. Listen. Hebrews 4 16 says, Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Say mercy. And find grace. Say grace to help in time of need whatever that need is the grace of God is available what we need to do is to receive it whether you're writing a test in school and maybe you're confused about the answer you can ask God for that grace for that wisdom if you're going through something that feels too hard to bear you can ask God for that grace. Little Troy just said something about spiritual growth, growing with intentionality. Sometimes when you're being pulled on different sides, when you're being distracted by maybe friends, co-workers or whatever, and you want to serve God, but on the other hand, you're being pulled, you can ask God for grace to stand. Amen? Our walk with Jesus Christ will cost us. There are many movies my flesh may want to watch, but I can't watch because of consecration. It doesn't mean that your flesh would not crave it because you are a human being. So the fact that your flesh is craving something does not mean you are a bad person. It's when you give in to it that you have given in to the devil. Amen? For example, you're about to look into your email and you see an ad. And you know that if your pastor were to be sitting beside you, you will not watch that ad. But you click on the ad anyway. That ad will contaminate you. So when we talk about intentionality, it's sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to wake up in the morning to say, Lord, I'm going to devote 30 minutes or one hour to pray, to meet with you. I'm going to devote 30 minutes of my day to study the word of God. I'm going to say no to this. I'm going to say no to that. It may feel good to want to hang out with your friends, but you know all the things they're going to do are going to be ungodly. Even their mouth is filthy. Are you saying, Tony, don't mix with unbelievers? I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, don't go to where? Don't go to places where Christ, <laughs> where, places where Christ is not glorified. Places that can contaminate you. Don't have relationships that can contaminate you and pluck your feet out. Jesus Christ is coming back again. The Bible says he's going to come like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when he's coming, but we must live ready. Say live ready. 
You must live ready. So when we talk about intentionality, it will cost us. It will cost us. It will cost you your sleep. It will cost you your time. It will cost you your money. It will cost you your associations. It will cost you. Christianity is not bread and butter. It's not ice cream. It will cost you. But grace, say grace. Grace helps you. That's why we can do it with joy. It's not a miserable walk. If your walk with the Lord is miserable, it's because you're not walking in grace. If your walk with the Lord is hard, if your prayer time is hard, your Bible study life is hard, it's because you're doing it in your own strength. The grace of God. So as we close in prayer, I want you to receive the grace. In whichever area, somebody may need grace in their prayer life. Some other person may need grace in their giving life. Wherever you need grace, you may need grace to be able to say no to the wrong associations. Wherever you need grace, I want you to receive it. Let's receive grace. Father, your word says we should come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Lord, we receive grace, oh God, in every area of our need today. Lord, we receive grace to walk joyfully and joyously in this race that you have set our feet on. Grace, oh God, to, to make Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of our faith. Grace, oh God, to to be obedient to your word. Grace, oh God, not to give to the giving to the cravings of the flesh. Grace, oh God, grace to please you. Lord, we receive grace in every area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we receive grace to help us, to help us in our time of need, to help us, oh God. We receive grace to keep walking without crumbling under pressure, without quitting, without giving up, without giving it to the devil, without giving it to temptations. We receive grace. Grace, oh God. Grace, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. I hope you're all ready to pray. I know with the time change and everything, <laughs> we, we have all these... Uh, enemies of our soul, you know, that come even in the form of a chime change or if you didn't get a good night's sleep, sometimes you have to press in and really overcome. But this morning, I believe as we worship that some of you need to just let go and you need to just worship the Lord and just, just be honest and be real with him. Some of you have not cried in a long time. You've never just experienced or encountered like those tears that kind of just wash you clean. Have you ever, when you were a kid and your your mom or your dad hurt your feelings, somebody hurt your feelings and you cried like a baby, what we say, and you're like, <laughs> like that, you know, after you cry so hard like that. But I'm telling you, when you get into the presence of the Lord and you just let go, let go of trying to have it all together, trying to be so strong and be so, so perfect in, in so many ways, and just Come before the Lord this morning and worship and let go. Just surrender. Just go deeper in your surrender. A lot of the reason that we get stuck in places in our walk with the Lord is because we're not going deep enough in the place of surrender. Sometimes that can be ugly and messy because we have to go deeper inside of us and, and uh, unblock. We have to let those things be unblocked that are blocking us, whether it's pride, whether it's offense, whether it's anger. There's spirits that are after and attacking you and trying to keep you at the most, I say, the shallowest level in the Lord so that all you're thinking about is, well, I, I'm saved. I've said the sinner's prayer and I know I'm going to heaven, but you're living at the lowest level of Christianity there is. You need to go deeper so that you can start experiencing the victories. You can start experiencing the relationship the Holy Spirit wants to have with you that is better, deeper, more fulfilling than any other relationship that is in your life. Any other relationship, the Holy Spirit is more fulfilling. So as we worship this morning, I want you to just position your heart intentionally. Like he said, would you intentionally position your heart to surrender and just 
get lost in worship and not be worried about what anybody around you is thinking about you, how you sound, how you look. Just be free. If you need to get out of your seat and move to a place where it's just you and the Lord, where you can just be free, free to surrender, free to, to lift your hands and free to just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
your name, to magnify your name in this place. That's why we're here. That's why we've come here this morning. I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you that we have the opportunity to come into this place and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I have an advantage because I, I, I know what the word is this morning and it was confirmed during prayer. It was actually confirmed during worship when we're singing how he loves us. You know, we're here to worship him and to praise him. But it's my prayer, it's my prayer that in the midst of worshiping and praising the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who gives us breath, it's my prayer that we would experience and that we would know the love of God. That's my prayer, that you and I, and even those watching online, that we would know the love of God. Because when you know the love of God, when you experience the love of God, it changes everything in your life. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had to worship you and to praise you, Lord. And I pray that, that even as we transition, Lord, it, 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 this, this spirit, this, this moment, it continues on, Lord. And we glorify you, we exalt you, Lord. We lift up the word of God, that it would change our lives, that it would encourage us. Lord, that it, would, that it would strengthen us, Lord. Give us hope. And thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come into this place, to worship you, to praise you, to pray, to hear your word. God, we are so grateful. Have your way in our midst. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. seated. Say hi to somebody next to you before you're seated. I'm going to grab some stuff. Hey, Joe, can you do me a favor and grab that chair in the back? Way back there. How's everybody doing this morning? I uh, had a busy, busy week. Um, I'll share that with you. I'm not tired and I want to sit down. Uh, I am going to try something this morning. You know, sometimes I'm going to try to sit down and, and teach this morning because I, really this morning I just want to talk to you. But, man, the minute I get up here, it's like I slip into preacher mode or the teaching mode. And it's like even, even when I pray, I, I can't stand still when I pray. And when I get up here, it's like, you know, I'm just, ah. So this morning I really just want to talk to you. So I'm going to try to sit down, and maybe that'll help. I really doubt it. I doubt that I can sit down that long. Okay, but I am going to give it a try because I just want to share my heart with you this morning and talk with you a little bit. Um, if you want to give, you can text to give. You can grab the envelopes. You guys kind of all know. You all know the drill. Um, the devotions are back there. I believe this week's titled Take Advantage of All Kinds of Prayer. It's on our website also. Please, guys, take advantage. Please. Take advantage of all of that stuff. Take advantage of those devotionals. I think this is the ninth or tenth one. Um, man, I'd really love for you to just start digging into those. They're good stuff. They're going to help you grow. And, and, and that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Amen. So those are, there's a few written ones. Some of us, myself included, like paper copies. But uh, they're online now. Just go on the website. Go to blog. Go to Pastor Troy's corner or pastor troy's blog something like that and you can pull them up there there's nine of them if you haven't read any of them hey you can start right now amen you can start right now um boy oh one more one more thing for for those of you that are watching online we're going to start live streaming our prayer time also um you know what ignite church is built around prayer I mean, that's, that's who we are. That is part of our service. You know, sometimes we say, oh, ch church starts at 930. Well, church starts at 845 for some of us because we believe prayer is that important. Prayer, worship, and the word of God. So you get all three. But if you're watching online, you never get the prayer. And I've had a few people say, hey, do you guys live stream the prayer time? Well, we're going to start doing it. We're, we did it this morning. Um, we're going to be making some changes around here, maybe adding a camera or two. We're really trying to help um, to improve our online, our online streaming, perform, what, uh, whatever you want to call it, okay? 
Um, Because I've watched it a few times. I I don't like watching myself, okay? So it's hard to watch, okay? How many of you have ever heard yourself taped or singing and you think, that doesn't sound, that's not what I sound like. That's not, that's, when I watch it, I'm like, that's, that's not me. That's not even what I, I don't move around that much. I don't do, I do, I do, okay? So I hate watching it, but, but I'm, I'm watching it so that I can get a better understanding of what everybody's seeing. So we're going to improve upon that. But if you want to join us for prayer, we're going to start the online prayer time at 845. You can join us for prayer. Um, I'm hoping Pastor Emmanuel's watching, got to join us in prayer in Philadelphia. And, and we have a lot of other people that have moved away and have asked me the same thing. Hey, why don't you live stream prayer so we can feel like we're there? So we're going to start doing that, and hopefully it'll get better and better. I'll go back this, this week and look to see how it turned out and what it looked like. Whew. All right. You ready for the word this morning? All right, again, I just want to sit down for a minute and talk to you, if that's even possible for me, okay? I'm going to keep my notes in front of me because, man, I could get sidetracked so easy, okay? It's so easy. Um, It was about a week and a half ago. I read this one verse, just one verse. I don't know if it was the verse of the day or if it was how many of you, like, on Facebook or, I don't know, whatever you use, you're, you're scrolling maybe, and there's just one verse there. Well, I read this verse, and it was powerful, and it just, it just kind of hit me. Just one verse. Let, let me read you the verse, um, and then I have a question for you in just a moment. But the verse is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18. Anybody at prayer, does that sound familiar? Did you give him that verse, or did you pick that up? The, in, in prayer this morning, uh, the scriptures that were used were were all the scriptures I have down this morning, okay? And we didn't coordinate that. It just, God did, God did. So it's Ephesians 3, verse 18. It says this, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Man, that is a powerful verse. That is, that, that is a, it, it's an incredible verse. But let me just tell you what happened to me when I read it. I read the verse, and, and, and immediately, I thought, I, immediately I thought, man, there's, there's something in there. There is something in that verse. And maybe I've been reading my devotional. You know, I have a devotional that breaks down the Greek and the Hebrew. And a lot of times it, it, it'll take a verse like that and it'll break down certain words. And it'll just open up to a whole new, a whole new idea that I never even thought. So I'm, I'm reading this verse and maybe that's in the back of my mind. I'll bet the Greek and the Hebrew. I bet they're powerful words. I bet, I'm just reading it thinking there is something there with those four words. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep. Um, let, me, let me give you... Uh, King James, it's the breadth, the, the length, the depth, and the height of God's love. So I, I'm like, there's something there. You ever read scripture and you're like, oh man, there is something there. So I took those four words, I went to work. Went, went into study mode, got out my strong concordance and linear. I googled the Greek meaning of all of these words, all four of those words. And, and, and let, me, let me just give you their, their meanings, okay? Let me show you what I found. It's amazing, okay? It is amazing. So the first word. Um, the first word, breadth, or, or the width, how wide. For the word wide, the Greek word is actually platos, P-L-A-T-O-S. So the Greek word for wide is platos, okay? Do you know what the Greek word for wide means? Do you know what it means? It's amazing. Do you know what it means? Here's what it means. It means wide. Wow, that, that's, that's pretty good, huh? Okay, but, but, but let us move. How about length? The, word for, the Greek word for length is mikos, M-E-K-O-S. Do you know what the Greek word for length actually means? It means length. Wow, right? Like mind-blowing, right? Height. The, the Greek word is upsos, U-P-S-O-S. You know what it means? It means height. Depth. The word is bathos. The word means, the, the Greek word for depth means depth. Let me just tell you, I, I got to admit, I was a little disappointed, okay? I was a little bit disappointed. I, I was looking for this great big revelation, which really, which really is kind of dumb when you think about it, because that right there already is pretty intense. It's pretty intense already when Paul says, guys, 
the love of God is so wide, it's so high, it's so deep, it, it, it's whatever one I just missed, um, it's, it, it's so high, so long, so wide, so deep, you can't even fathom it. So just those words alone are already powerful. But I was looking for something more. I was looking for some, some, some big revelation, okay? Now, so once I got to that point and I didn't get this revelation, I did what I always tell all of you to do. What do I tell you to do when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to looking at the Bible and just maybe one verse? What do I tell you to do? You've got, you can't take a verse out of context, right? We talk about that an awful lot. You can't take a verse out of context. So the best thing to do is read before it, read after it, maybe, maybe do a little bit of study and find out when it was written, the timing that it was written, the place it was written, who's writing it or who's saying it. All of these things, all of these things are important to make sure we're not taking any of God's word out of context. And let me just say this before we jump into um, Ephesians 3.18. There's nothing out of context about Ephesians 3.18. There is nothing out of context, but I just wanted to get a better understanding of it. So that's why I thought, I'm going to dig into this verse. So let me add just one more thing because I, I jotted it down in my notes. This is me, okay? So me. It's not theology. It's not doctrine. This is just me, okay? I look at, when I look at the Word of God, again, it's just me. I kind of look at the Word of God as, as a circle, okay? It's a circle, and God is always at the top of the circle, okay? But the Word of God, it starts with God, and it always ends with God. But there is stuff in the middle, okay? And that's kind of how I look at the Word of God. A uh, simple illustration would be John 3, 16, right? It starts with God, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It starts with God loving and it goes all the way around and ends with everlasting life with God, right? Everybody knows that verse, right? Everybody knows that verse. Say that verse with me real quick. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life with God. Now, now here's the thing, even about that verse, okay? Most people can read it. Most people can quote it. Most people can can say it and we do it correctly and they say it correctly but but here's the thing most people including believers including the church when they they read John 3 16 they quote it or they say it but you know what's really going on in their mind you know what they're living out Here, here's what they're living out I wrote it this way God so loved the world that he gave his only son so you won't perish or have everlasting life and when you live that way, when you think of it that way, you don't make the circle. You're stuck right here. You're stuck right here because what part was missing? What part was missing? You can't get from God so loved the world to, to everlasting life with God without going th to the part believes in him. You following me? It starts with God and ends with God, but there's a part in there for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will have eternal life. So it kind of completes the circle. Yes, it starts and ends with God. Yes, I know God sent his only son to pay for your sins, to die on the cross. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. But you still, there's still that part in there. You have to believe it. Amen. You, you have to be one of the whosoever believeth to have eternal life. So that's kind of the way I look at scripture. It, it, it goes in a full circle, kind of went off track there a little bit. And I even had my notes and I still went off track, okay? But, but here's my thing. If you're here this morning, maybe, maybe you're watching online, okay? If you're here this morning or you're watching online and you are far from God, you're, maybe you're backslide. Maybe you're even watching. You don't even believe in God. You don't even believe in God. You, maybe you're watching and you know that, well, you know that the way you believe in God is not the right way. To believe in God that word when it says whosoever believeth man that word believe entitles a lot it's not just oh I believe in God it's like no believeth in him is a life surrendered to God it's a life given to God I've given my life to God it's surrendered to God I'm going to serve him I'm going to follow him I'm going to be his witness it's a surrendered life to God and and if you're watching online and you think and, and you're in any of those places here's what I want to tell you this morning you ready God loves 
you. God loves you. But now here, here, here's the problem with that. And I'm going to get to a story at the end of this that, that really brings this, this whole scripture home and what I, what I went through this morning. But, but here's the problem with that. God loves you. You know what? I, this just again, me. I feel like it's become so generic. It has become so cliche. We just throw it out there. The church does. Believers does. Oh, God loves you. It's become so cliche that it's lost, it's lost its punch. It's lost its, its meaning. Jesus loves you. How many, Jesus loves you, or, or this one, Jesus loves you, and so do I, you know, as you cut them off. I, I've seen that on a bumper sticker, right? The car cuts you off in front of you, and the bumper sticker says, Jesus loves you, and so do we. I'm thinking, really? <laughs> really? Or, or it's church slogans. Jesus loves you, and so do, so do we, and so does Ignite Church. It's just become so cliche and generic that, that people don't grasp it anymore. Even believers were not grasping the love of God. So I believe what Paul is saying here, I think Paul uses these four words to describe God's love for you, for, for you and I. Knowing, he's, he's describing it that way, knowing if we could just grasp it. Man, if we could just grasp it, if we could really get a hold of God's love, there's absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing that could keep you from surrendering your life to him. If you get a hold of, if you can grasp the love of God this morning, or if you already have, listen to me, there is absolutely nothing that would keep you from surrendering your whole life to him. So let's, let, let's look at what Paul's saying, because it's so much more than just Ephesians 3, 18. So doing what I've always told you to do, right? Look behind it, look before it. So, so here's what I began to do, and it was kind of funny, okay? So I always tell you, read the verses before it, read the verses after it. So, so um, it was Ephesians 3.18. So I backed up a little ways to, to Ephesians 3.14. I believe it'll be up on the screen. Here's how Ephesians 3.14 th- starts. When I think of all this, all right, when you read that, what does that mean? Well, that means he just said something. He just wrote something before all of that, right? When I think of all this, all what? Everything he just said. So, so I backed up and I got to that verse and I'm like, well, it looks like I got to go back even further, right? So I just went one verse further and, and, the, and Ephesians 3.13 said, said this. Therefore, I ask, how many of you know what therefore means? Therefore means the same thing, right? I just said something. I just wrote something. How many of you have ever heard this, this saying? When you see a therefore in the Bible, find out what it's there for, okay? Therefore means he just said something or wrote something. So I needed to go back again. So that happened a couple times. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to go back to the beginning of chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. And so I went to it, and here's chapter 3, verse 1. This is NLT. It says this. When I think of all this, I, Paul... (laughs) I'm like, Lord, come on, where's this going to stop? So, so you know what I did? I'm like, I just, I just need to read Ephesians, okay? Obviously, God, I just need to read the whole thing. I'm not going to do, relax, okay? We're not going to read all of Ephesians this morning. I did it for you, okay? I, I did it for you, okay? So to save us some time, we are going to back it up, but we're going to pick it up at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. And I want you to see this this morning. I want you to see why this, why verse 18 and why this whole section of scripture is so important. Ephesians 3, 14. It says this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father. I fall to my knees and pray to the Father. What we're about to read after this, what we're about to read and including Ephesians 3, 18 is actually, listen, it's actually a prayer. What we are about to read is actually a prayer that Paul is praying for the church. It's a prayer that Paul is praying for the church, that Paul is praying for believers, and it's a prayer that we can pray. It's a prayer that you and I can and should be praying over ourselves, for ourselves, and for those around us, for our loved ones. Everything that's going to go on from this point on is actually Paul praying. He's, he, it's actually Paul praying. How many of you have ever heard this phrase? Have you ever heard this phrase, the Pauline prayer? Show of hands. You ever heard that phrase, the Pauline prayers or the Pauline epistles? Epistles are actually letters. The Pauline letters. Now, I, I don't, I actually looked up why, because I, I, I've heard that phrase and, and it was in one of my commentaries. And I'm like, why do we do that? Why Pauline? 
You know, so I actually Googled it. And you know what I found when I Googled Pauline? Any gamers out there? All I saw was Mario Kart. I guess there's a character on Mario Kart. <laughs> Pauline? You guys don't know it? Neither do I. That's all it was. 90% of it was Pauline, and she switched from Pauline to something else. I don't know. So I Googled it. There wasn't really a good answer. I don't know why we used that term Pauline. I don't use it because to me, it sounds like Paul had a wife, and she wrote some prayers, and she wrote some letters, okay? The letters of Pauline. It sounds like his wife. I remember hearing a pastor. I don't know if this is true or if he was joking around. But uh, he had somebody at his church who, how many of you know the epistles are actually the letters in the Bible? The letters written by Paul? They're epistles. There was actually a believer who thought the epistles were actually the apostles' wives, okay? So, so I stay away from those words because they can be somewhat confusing, okay? But Pauline prayers are simply prayers that Paul prayed. They're prayers that Paul prayed. Prayers that Paul prayed for the church, for believers. And listen to me this morning. Man. They are some of the most powerful prayers. As I was going through this this morning, it's like, I'm going to, I don't know how many weeks it'll take, and I don't know when I'll even be ready. I'm going to do a series on the Pauline prayers. I won't call it that, okay? But I'm going to do a series on the prayers that Paul prayed because they are powerful. They are powerful. We're going to do a whole study on it. Um, real quick, I brought this one. How many of you... You can't see it from down there. But you remember this? I handed you out a prayer five months, four or five months ago. That prayer was actually one of Paul's prayers. It, it's actually Colossians 1, 9 through 12. Let me read it to you. And I made it where you could make pray it over yourself or others. But Colossians 1, 9 to 12, I didn't give this one to you, Brianna. It says, I ask God to give me complete knowledge of his will and to give me spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way I live will always honor and please the Lord, and my life will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, I will grow as I learn to know God better and better. I also pray that I will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so I will have all the endurance and patience I need. May I be filled with joy, always thanking the Father, who has enabled me to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. Listen, and I handed these out. If you, it, it, that's a powerful prayer. You need to pray that over yourself. You, when you do that, when you pray the prayers that Paul prayed, you're praying the word of God over yourself. You're praying the word of God over yourself. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I also gave it to you in a different version so that you could pray it over other people. I asked God to give so-and-so complete knowledge of his will and to give so-and-so spiritual wisdom and understanding. You can pray these prayers over yourself. You can pray these people over the prayer, pray these prayers over the people around you. These are powerful prayers. And I want you to understand that because this, what we're looking at this morning is one of those prayers. It's one of those prayers that Paul prayed. So let's continue. Uh, Ephesians 3, 14 to 16, it says this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources. I got to pause there, okay? I have to pause there. Paul is praying for us. He's praying for this church. And he says, I pray that from his glorious, check this out, unlimited resources unlimited resources do you know that you serve a God who has unlimited resources when you really grab hold of that when you really comprehend that man that is powerful because Paul is about to pray for some big things Paul is about to pray for some good things for these people and and, and after that statement after that statement I'm gonna pray for all these things but I want you to know first that that the God I'm praying for to is a God of unlimited resources. In other words, whatever I'm about to pray for, it isn't too big for my God. Whatever Paul's telling him, whatever I'm about to pray for isn't too difficult for my God. Whatever we're about to pray for isn't impossible for our God who has unlimited resources. I think that's something that, that you and I need to grab hold of because I, I don't know about you, okay? I don't know about you, but I pray for some pretty big things. How many of you pray for some big things? I pray for some pretty big things. I pray for some outrageous things. And let me just say it this way. I pray for some things that may seem impossible. But when I take that verse into consideration 
and think about the God to whom I'm praying and asking these things, I'm praying to a God with unlimited resources? What's impossible for him? Nothing. nothing. Amen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, now, if they don't, if those things don't happen, listen to me. It's still not because God couldn't do them. Okay, there could be other reasons, other factors. But listen, when you're praying, don't be afraid to ask for something that may seem impossible to you, that may seem difficult, may seem too big. We are praying to a God who has unlimited resources. And Paul is saying that. He puts that out there first, knowing what he's about to say. He's telling them, listen, I want you guys to understand that what I'm about to pray for, when you ask your God, know that your God is the God of unlimited resources. Amen? So, unlimited resources for what? Let's continue. Ephesians 3.16. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Our God, who has unlimited resources, Paul is saying, you need to pray to that God who has unlimited resources. You need to pray that he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Think about that for a moment. I, I, I was kind of comparing it to physical strength. Phys how many of you agree physical strength is important? And then if I have physical strength, I could lift more. I could run more. I could run faster. I could jump higher. I could beat my kids in basketball. I could do an awful lot of things, okay? If I have physical strength, I'm healthier. There's a lot of good things about physical strength. And listen to me, it is important. But when my inner strength, check it out. When my inner strength, when my inner strength, when I'm strengthened in my inner man by the Holy Spirit, listen to me, I can stand up against any temptation when I'm strengthened inside by the Holy Spirit. Listen, we've all, seen, we've all seen physically strong men or women, whatever, fall to temptation. But this verse is telling me that, that the, God, my, the God that I'm praying to that has unlimited resources will empower my inner man with strength. With strength. When my inner man is strengthened through the Holy Spirit, I can stand against any storm, against any trial. When my inner man is strengthened through the Holy Spirit, Paul's telling us right here that fear and anxiety will have no place in me. No place in me. When things get tough, nothing's going to shake me. Paul is saying that, that you and I can pray to our God who has unlimited resources, unlimited resources, and he, and he will empower us. He will empower us, or he'll empower those that we're praying for with inner strength through the Spirit. You see where this prayer gets better and better? It goes on. Verse 17. Verse 17, it says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him Watch this. This is really important. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Then as you, what? Oh, you have a part to play, huh? Then as you trust in him, you have to trust in him. You have to believe. Your roots, your roots grow down deep into what? God's love. Your roots grow down deep into God's love. I've never seen it this way before. King James Version says that you would be rooted and grounded in God's love. That you would be rooted and grounded in God's love. That your roots would grow down deep into God's love. Now remember, this is, this is Ephesians 3.17. So we're headed, we're about there. We're headed into Ephesians 3.18. But before we get there, before we get there, Paul's telling us, let your roots grow down deep into God's love. Be rooted and grounded in God's love, and nothing will shake you. And nothing will shake you. Nothing will be able to pull you up out of his hand. All right. So you ready for Ephesians 3.18? Finally getting there? Okay. Ephesians 3.18. Uh, NLT, it goes like this. I'm going to read 18 and 19 together. Here we go. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should. In other words, we should. As all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience, okay, King James, New King James says, may you know. So I'm going to read it with no, K-N-O-W. May you know the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. 
when I first read that whole verse in context, I kind of had to laugh. It's like Paul saying, may, may you, may you uh, the beginning, and may you have the power to understand. And then he gets to verse 19. It says, and though it is too great to understand. It's like Paul's telling us, I want to give you some understanding. I want to teach you how to understand this. But let me just tell you up front, it's too great for you to even understand. <laughs> right? That's kind of what he's saying here. And I'm like, Paul, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? You're going to explain to me something that I won't even get, that I won't even understand. But as I dove into the words and as I looked at it closer, I want to show you what Paul is saying and why, why I believe Paul uses these extra words, why he uses four, these four words, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep, instead of just saying, oh, God's love is great. He went that extra mile. And, and I also want to show you why there's not that great revelation that I thought I was going to find, okay? Paul's trying to explain something that in his own words is too great to understand fully. God's love, is, this is according to Paul, God's love for you and me is, Paul's saying, man, it is just too great for you to fully comprehend, for you to fully understand. And Paul's saying with these four words, um, God's love for you, God's love for you and I is so wide. He's saying, it's so wide, you can't measure it. You can't measure it. He's like, it's so high, you can't see the top of it. It's so long, you can't exhaust it. It's so deep, you'll never get to the bottom of it. And that, that, that's what Paul is saying right here. It, it's something that you won't understand, but I want, you to, I want to tell you that, man, it's, it's unmeasurable. It's unmeasurable. And that, that, now, now, now here's, here's, here's kind of my last point. I'm going to start wrapping it up. But Paul's saying God's love for you is too great for you to understand fully. So, so here's what Paul's saying. So, I'm praying, I'm praying. So Paul's saying, man, this love for you is too great for you to understand completely. So I'm praying that you will, here's the word that King James said, that you will know, that you will know his love for you. That you will experience his love for you. Listen, listen. And, and here's what I finally, the, the light bulb went on, okay? You don't have to understand it. You just have to really know it, really experience the love of God. And, and, and I know this is kind of a silly, crazy illustration, but, but listen, most of you are sitting here this morning. Most of you are sitting here this morning. You know your cars are going to start when you leave here this morning, right? You know, you know, at least you're hoping. No, you, you all know, you know your car is going to start when you leave here this morning. You're not up until I just said that. You weren't even thinking about it, okay? You weren't worried about it. You weren't thinking about it. You know your car is going to understand. You know your car is going to start when you go out there. But listen, most of you don't understand how it's going to start, right? There's some of you don't have a clue. It's like, I don't know, man. I just put the key in and turn it, and it's a miracle. It just starts, okay? You don't understand the whole workings of an engine, all of that, okay? You, you don't understand, but how many of you know? It's going to start. It's going to, you don't, and listen to me. <laughs> My wife would say, I don't have to understand. <laughs> I don't have to understand. I just, I don't, I, I don't even have to put oil in it. I'm hoping you do, right? It, it, but it's like, I don't have to understand. I just know it's going to start. It's going to start. Now listen, there's so many people out there, even in the church, and, and, and their concept of God's love, their, their thinking is warped in the sense I don't understand how God could love me. I don't understand how God could forgive me. And, and even believers, I don't know why God would even love, would, would still love me. I've messed up so many times. I don't understand how God could. I don't understand how God, why God would even love me. I've blown it so many times. I've given my life to him. I've messed up. I've walked away. I've blown it. I don't understand. I don't understand how God could love me. And Paul, Paul in this simple prayer, Paul right here is saying, you don't have to understand. You don't have to understand. You don't have to understand if you just know God's love. That song we said, he loves, that song we sang. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. When you know that, 
when your roots have gone down deep into God's, God's love, when they're sunk in God's love, if you're rooted and grounded in his love, then listen to me, then you'll be strong. Then, then, then you won't be shaken. You'll, you'll start experiencing victory in your life, knowing the love of God, knowing the love of God, knowing his love. Listen to me, it changes everything about your life, about your walk with him, about your relationship with others. Knowing God's love changes everything. This is a powerful prayer. And when we grasp or experience and know the love of God, verse 19 says that we will be complete and full of the power that comes from God. Did you imagine? Just knowing the love of God empowers you with power that comes from God. Let me, let me, um, let me tell you what happened this week. Um, tell, you, tell you a story, not a story, but this, this, this is kind of where my week went, and man, this scripture came to life this week. Don't you love it when you, you read a verse, you hear a verse, and then you actually see it play out right in front of you, okay? Um, th- this week, this week um, we went out to Sacramento to see my mom, and it, it's, if you don't know the situation, my mom um, lives out in Placerville. It's out, out in Sacramento. Um, my mom and dad were divorced, so my mom lives with my stepfather. He's been really sick the last, the last year. He's been in a, a nursing home. It's actually a, reg, a residential house, very, really nice. Um, the first time we dropped him off, we're all looking at the house. It's this mansion out there. We're like, man, I'd live there. I'd live there, and they feed him good. They're taking really good care of him. But he's been there four to five, maybe six months at the most, um, and they're taking really good care of him. Now, he's there, but my mom's not with him. And she lives in her house in Placerville. They moved out there 20, 30 years ago. Most of his family was all out there. Um, most of all of his family has either passed away or moved away. So it was just her and him out there now. And for the last six months, he's been in there. For the last year and a half, he hasn't been doing very good physically. And, and I'm just kind of telling you all that to, to catch you up with where, where I'm going with all of this, Okay. So, so it's been, she's out there all alone. And, and so we, we, were, we were going out there. We were going out there, and I'll, I'll tell you how we ended up out there in just a moment. But So we went out there, went to my mom's house. The next day we went out to the house where my stepfather is at. Um, his name is Jack, in case I say Jack, and you're like, who's he talking about? Um, and we had a good visit. You know, so he's not always there. Um, he's got some dementia, and he's not... He looked good, but when I say he looked good, he looked good for him, okay? He, he's not, you know, he's not doing that well. He hasn't been doing that well. But we got there, and it's like, okay, sometimes we're expecting the worst. And, and he didn't talk much. It took him a, a little while to recognize and, and all of those kind of things. But, but we had a good visit. We had a good visit, and we kind of left thinking. Uh, there was, it was like six or seven months ago when we went out to visit. We thought, man. We'll probably never see him again. When we left that time, we're like, we'll probably never see him again. But man, he's just, he's just hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. And so we left that day thinking, okay, you know, we'll probably, you know, he's not that bad. He's not good, but he's, you know, not that bad. And it was the very next day at 4 a.m. We're at my mom's house and she gets that phone call. She gets that phone call telling her that Jack has passed away. And, and, and here's, here's how I saw this scripture play out. See, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the last seven months were like. It doesn't matter what the last year and a half was like. It doesn't matter that his death wasn't a shock. We were all kind of expecting it. He's 94 this year. You know, so, so it doesn't matter that it wasn't a shock. Here, here, here's the thing. No one. No one should have to get that call alone. Nobody, nobody should have to get that call alone, even if you're expecting it. And so here's where, man, God just spoke to me, and I saw the scripture play out. God loved my mom enough to make sure we were there. He loved my mom enough to make sure we were there. And, and, and here's how I know that. Here's how I know that, okay? I was thinking about moving the trip. I was thinking about going next week because you look at your phone, your, your weather app, and, man, it's like Irvine, Lake Forest. It's like no rain. It's looking good. Every time I looked at Placerville, 
It's pouring rain. It is pouring. One day that we were there, I, actually the day he passed away, it literally snowed at my mom's house. They've been there 20, 30 years. I don't think she, they've ever seen that much snow. So it literally snowed. Our drive back to, to um, Irvine, it rained 80% of the, our drive back, okay? So I'm looking at my weather app and everything, and I'm thinking, hey, babe, we need to, maybe we'll just push it to the following week. And, and Lori said, well, let's, you know, let's see, blah, 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 some things were going on. And she's like, let me just pray. And, and I wish I could take care of credit for it, but I can't because I probably would have moved it to next week, okay? But Lori comes back and says, man, I don't know why. I don't know why, but I really feel like the Lord is saying, I want you to go this week. I want you to go keep your plans that you have. I want you to go now. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> here we go, right? And in hindsight, in hindsight, I can see that God loved my mom enough to make sure she wasn't alone to get that phone call. I believe God made sure that we were there. Listen to me this morning. That's the love of God. That is the love of God. And it's twofold. It's twofold. Really knowing the love of God will change your life. Will change your life. When you get rooted in deep into the, into the love of God, when you experience and know the love of God, listen to me, it will change your life. The verse we read earlier, it will actually empower you. But here's the second part of that. Having the love of God in me, having that same love of God in me can change my family. It can change the, my church. It can change my church. It can change my community. It can change, listen, it can change our nation. Amen? Having that, it, it's one thing to know the love of God because of what it'll do for me. But having that love of God in me, man, it can change everybody around me. And, and, and Paul said, Paul said in verse 18, to know the love of God as all God's people, what? Should. Paul's like saying, guys, we should know this. We should be walking in this we should be knowing and experiencing god god's love one for us but number two for everybody around us and and, and i was wrapping this up and levi you can come up and I, I was wrapping this up and i was thinking about man if you look around the world is not breaking down the church the doors of the churches to get in <laughs> if you look at our society you look at our nation the world is not breaking down the doors to get into churches. If the love of God is as incredible as Paul says it is, and I believe it is, guys, the world would want it. The world would want it. And I don't believe it's, that, it's not that the love of God isn't what Paul said it is. I, I truly believe it is. I believe it's us believers that have known, that know and have experienced the love of God aren't expressing the love of God, aren't showing the love of God, aren't walking in the love of God for the rest of this world to see. Um, I, I, I hope you went and saw it. If you haven't, man, you really should go see the Jesus Revolution. It really is. It, it's a good movie, even if you're not spiritual, okay? But spiritual-wise, it's, it's a fantastic movie. But there's a part in that movie, if you know who the characters are, uh, Lonnie Frisbee, who was the hippie guy if you've seen any of the movie okay my kids all went and saw it and they're like that's why you had long hair growing up dad right and now they always think that's when I worship sometimes they point my finger and they're all like is that why you always point your finger when you're in worship and it's like no I don't, I don't know why I do that okay it has nothing to do with being a hippie and having long hair and all of that okay but the guy was a hippie drugs all of that stuff but he came to Jesus but then he came to Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa just down the road and, and, and he was, you, you need to go see the movie. I won't blow any of it, but he's talking with the pastor who is Chuck Smith. Most of you know him or know that name. But he said this to Chuck Smith. The doors of your church are closed to us. The doors of your church are closed to us. And I thought, how much of the world looks at the church thinking the very same thing? You know, Pastor Troy, the doors of your church are closed to us. I'm not like you. I'm not, we're different. I'm, uh, I'm messed up or whatever they might be thinking. And, and, and great verse, I didn't give it to you, Brianna, but Romans 2, 4 says, it's God's kindness or it's God's love, but it's God's kindness that leads to repentance. 
it's God's kindness that will lead people to repentance. So let's let him worry about that. Amen. I, I, I spent, I have spent too much time sometimes trying to get people to repent, trying to, and listen, even throughout the movie, man, it, it showed how the church needs to love people. It doesn't mean we condone and, and excuse different lifestyles, but we need to open up the doors and love people. And, 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 and if we can grasp and get our roots down deep into the love of God, listen to me, I believe we can change our, our families, our communities, and even our nation. So what if we really know and grasp the love of God? What, what, if, what if we open the doors and show the world what it really looks like? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And this morning, as, as, as you leave this morning, I want you to grasp. I want you to know that you know that you know that you know the love of God. Because I believe it's the love of God that will change you and empower you, and then it's going to change the people around you. Amen. Can we pray? Father, I thank you. I thank you for the love of God. I thank you, God, that you actually demonstrated your love right, right out in the open, right in front of me this week. You showed me that you love my mom enough, enough to change my heart, to change whether whatever needed to be changed so that we would be there for her. You loved her enough so she wouldn't get that phone call al alone. And God, I realize that it's not just her. It's all of us. It's all of us here this morning. It's all of you watching online. God loves you that much. And it's my prayer. It's, Paul, it's Paul's prayer. It was, it's what Paul's telling us to pray for ourselves and other people. Grab hold of the love of God. Yes, it's too wide, it's too high, it's too long, it's too deep for you to completely understand, but you can know it. You can experience. And just knowing and experiencing and being rooted in that love was going to change your life. Father, I pray that you would, just as you did for me this week, that you would reveal to those here and those watching, you would reveal your love to them that it would no longer be generic, it would no longer be cliche, oh, Jesus loves you, but we would actually know the love of God. Oh, I thank you for your word, Lord. I pray for this place. I pray for Ignite Church, Lord, that, that people in this community and around here would, would be drawn to this place, not because of, 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 of great worship, not because of teaching, but because the love of God is in this place. The love of God is in these people to effectively see lives changed for the kingdom. I thank you for your word, Lord. I pray blessing over all those that are here this morning, Lord. Thank you, for Lord, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, listen, uh, the, the altars will be open. If you want prayer for anything, please make your way forward. You can be prayed. But listen, if you don't know the love of God, if you've never experienced the love of God, please, Make your way forward. We'd like to lay hands on you and pray for you because the love of God is in this place. The love of God is in the people in this place. And we want you to know the love of God and experience it. Amen. Amen. So if that's you this morning, you don't, don't know the love of God, you've never experienced it, please come on up. If you just need prayer for healing, for finances, for marriage, for anything, we'd love to pray with you and lift you up. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The devotionals are back there. Man, have a great day. God bless you.